Okay, in this video we're going to go over a type of question that comes up on the multiple choice section of the AP exam frequently, um, and that's to take the integral of an absolute value function. So these pretty much always look exactly the same, so we're just going to do two examples to show you how I think you should deal with them. So if we have something like the integral from 0 to 3 of the absolute value of x minus 1 dx, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this thing. So let's start with this, and there's really only three points that you need on this function, so the first one comes from here, so uh, the vertex of this thing is going to be at 1 because it's shifted 1 to the right, so I'm going to plot that, and I'm going to put a point there. Um, then I need to consider where this function is when x equals 0. So when x equals 0, you plug that in, it's the absolute value of negative 1, which is 1. I'm going to put a point there. Um, now I need to consider when x equals 3, so if I plug in 3, the absolute value of 2 is 2. So at 3, 2, I'm going to get a point. Now I'm just going to connect these like that, and now I can find the definite integral just by adding up the areas. So I got this region, um, which is half of a 1 by 1 square, so that's going to be 1 half, and then I have this region, which is going to be half of a 2 by 2 square, so that's going to be 2, and then when I add those up, I'm going to get 5 halves, and you deal with it, you don't have to deal with piecewise functions, you don't have to really think about it all that much. Um, that's the way I think you should always deal with these. I'll do one more. So let's take a look at the integral from negative 2 to 5 of the absolute value of x plus 1 dx. So again, we're just going to graph this. So we go here. Um, the first place that I care about is the vertex. So I look at this. Um, what would make that 0 is negative 1. So the vertex is going to be at x equals negative 1. So at negative 1, there's definitely a point. Now I have to think about when x equals negative 2. So if x equals negative 2, I'm getting the absolute value of negative 1, which is positive 1. So at negative 2, or at positive 1, so there's going to be a point. I'll look at when x equals 5, you get the absolute value of 6, which is just 6. So at 5, and then we're up at 6, so there's going to be a point there. And now we connect everything, and we have two regions we need to find. So you get two triangles. When you do this process, you pretty much always get two triangles, and you just add up their areas. So this is a 1 by 1 uh, square, and then we want half of it, so that's going to be 1 half. And then here, um, we got this whole region. Uh, so this one, sometimes people make a mistake on. Uh, it's a weird mistake to make, but this distance right here is 6. So this is half of a 6 by 6 square. They're not always squares, I just happen to choose two functions for which that happens. Um, just find the base and the height and do 1 half base times height. Um, so this is a 6 by 6 though, so I'm getting 18 here. And then I'll add those up. So that definite integral is going to be 37 over 2. Didn't have to deal with piecewise functions. This is definitely the easiest way to deal with these sorts of problems. Definitely recommend it. So to kind of summarize, if you find yourself doing the definite integral of the absolute value of a linear function, what you should definitely do is graph it and then just add up some triangles. So uh, that's how I think you should deal with these. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.